This video is on functions, which is the topic you covered in 3.1. Uh, so first, a definition. Um, a function is a relationship between two variables, an input, x value, output, y value, where for any given input value, there is exactly one output value. So let's look at a few examples. Um, our examples here, we're going to determine if the following relationships are functions or not. And we'll explain our reasoning. So our first example is a table. So when we're determining if a function, if a relation is a function or not, we always start by looking at our input values. And we always check to see if any repeat. So I have 1, 10, negative 3, 4, negative 7. None of them repeat, which means I don't have to do the second part of my test. Because, because none of them repeat, they can't have more than one value. 1 doesn't repeat, so it only has one value, 8. 10 doesn't repeat, it only has one output value, 3. Negative 3 doesn't repeat, so it only has one output value, negative 5, etc. So we say that... Um, we should probably be a little more formal. Number one is, is a function because each input value has only one output value. Number two. Number two, in this case, again, we're checking to see do any of my input values repeat. And in this case, we do have ones that repeat. Negative 7, 11, negative 7, 11. So we have two negative sevens that are the input values. So now we look at our output values. Um, in this case, our output values are actually the same. They're both 11. They're not different, which means that even though my input values repeat, negative seven and negative seven, this is still a function. Only one value. I say negative seven, you say 11. I say negative 7, you say 11. I say 4, you say 2. I say 4, you say 2. It doesn't matter how many times I ask the question. If I get the same answer every time, it is a function. So number 2 is a function because each input value has only one unique output value. Um, number 3. Number 3 is a graph. And I've labeled on this graph that I'm looking at the x value of 1, or the input value of 1. My input value of 1 gives me a y value up here and a y value down here, which means I get two different answers. I say 1 to you, you say a little bit more than 3, a little bit more than negative 1.2. Um, and because you can give me two answers, it's not a function. So um, number three is not a function because the input value of one, just to give an example, has two different output values, two different ones, unlike example two where it had the same output value. Example four. Example four, um, we're given a table of values again. And again, I ask that first question of, do any of my x's repeat? And they don't. So if I say 1, you say 8. I say 10, you say 11, etc. Now the tricky thing here, the thing that's going to that's gonna catch some of you, is that the 11 and the y's do repeat. But that's not the test. The test is not, do the y's repeat? The test is, do the x's repeat? And if they do, do they get the same answer? Or do they get me different answers? So these get me, each x value gets me only one answer. So number four is a function because each input value has one output value. Number five. Number five, I've already circled the, the worrisome part of this problem, which is that my one in my input values repeat. I've got a one here and a one here. So in this case, when I say one, you would say eight. And then when I say one again, you would say two. But eight and two aren't the same number. So that makes this not a function. So number five 
is not a function because the input value, one, right here, one, has two different output values. Our last example is a graph, and I've already added a little something to this graph. On this graph, I've added a bunch of vertical lines to ask myself, well, when this value of x gets plugged in, how many y's? One. This value of x, 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 one. So number six is also a function. And again, that is because each of those vertical lines represents an x value and how many y values it has associated with it. So I have an x value with one y value, an x with one y value, an x with one y value. And because it's one every single time, it is indeed a function.